call the meeting to order for the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee, February 27th, 9.15 a.m. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Okay. A quorum is present. First order of business <coughs> will be a approval of minutes. Motion made by Supervisor Bramer, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. First on, on the agenda today is assigned counsel. Would Joy like to come up and address the committee? Morning, new faces. Old faces. Morning. Old faces. This is easy. It's usually very short and sweet. I need to renew a contract with the Legal Aid Society to pay them out of grant funds, which is 100% reimbursed to the county through those funds. Okay, motion made by Supervisor Sokol, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. Any discussion? <laughs> yes, uh, Ms. Bramer. Joy, were these services being provided by someone else prior to this new contract? No. Just they weren't being provided? No, they've always been provided by Legal Aid okay. Society quite some time. Well, I was just curious, is this sort of like a state contract and pricing and things like that? Are we no, it's a grant contract. It's a grant contract. Grant funds through the Office of Indigent Legal Services. How long is this grant contract for? Uh, two, well, it's two years, but it's been extended multiple times to access all the money. Okay. And it's a nightmare to manage. <laughs> it's the state. Any other questions? Okay, we'll call for vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Next? Next is to renew the contract with the Rural Law Center to cover all appeals. That includes lower local courts and all the courts above. Uh, need to increase the funding on that by $7,500 per year to cover the overages because the contract calls for 20 and we've been running in the 23 to 26 per year. So every time it goes over that 20 mark, we get whacked $2,500. And they usually do the appeals for under that amount. Okay. Can we bring the motion to the floor? Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor Hogan. Discussion? Funding for this? Partially grant reimbursed through the same Office of Indigent Legal Services. Okay, and then the rest is from your budget? The rest is from my budget. And you have that in your budget? Correct. Including the increase? Sorry. Including the increase? Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Yahoo. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. You. Next on the list is fire prevention and building codes. Morning, Charles. Good morning. I don't have a whole bunch uh, this morning. Just uh, thought I'd come over and make an appearance, give everybody a little bit of an update. Uh, first item, our, we do 24 hours of in-service training. Um, every year, all six people in the office have to have that training. Three of them are scheduled to go to Lake Placid. 
was already uh, been through committee and approved. Um, and then the rest of us will go in the fall. So that is, uh, again, the mandatory 24 hours of in-service training. So that's item one. Um, the only other things I have is just some budget numbers. If you guys want to review those, take a look at where 2017 ended up and 2018 started up. <coughs> sure, if you could run us through a uh, summary right there. Um, essentially, as far as revenues go, we ended up um, 32,000 taken in 32,000. So 118% uh, above what we uh, budgeted in revenues. We got some pretty good numbers on the revenue side. On the expense side, we ended up having $12,439 left over. So we're pretty well under stars to that. Probably the biggest savings was in part-time salaries and in uh, gas. So the rest of it is pretty standard. You know, most of those numbers have been trimmed down. The ball pole ended up being like 44,000 above the adopted budget. That looks good. Thank you, Charles, for keeping the track of all of that. And as far as the revenues, it was just a busier year altogether for permits and inspections? I think, well, numbers-wise, it wasn't, um, we were down a little bit in numbers, but I think some of the projects, has, it has to do with the size of the buildings, mm -hmm. parts of it. Um, so it depends on how many big buildings went up, um, some of the additional fees that have been, were approved three or four years ago certainly have helped those numbers. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, I try to maintain at least 200 each year, but it varies so it seems to you know gradually go up each year is what it seems to be the trend so. sure. and as far as 2018 that last page um, that's just where we're at numbers wise for uh, January which is pretty standard it kind of fluctuates January is always one of the slower months this may be a little bit higher than last year because of the, uh, we had a lot of units that weren't picked up in 2017, so they got kind of got cycled through in 2018. All in all, numbers so far are looking really good for this year. Anybody have any questions on any of these? Any questions from the committee? None. Any, any from the floor? Privilege of the floor. Anybody would like to speak? Hearing none. And I think we'll turn that part of it. Thank you, Charles. Good Thank job, Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Sheriff's Committee. Uh, we have a number of trainings listed on our agenda for today, <coughs> specifically items A, B, C, D, E, F, and H, which are all in-state training, and we have the funding in our budget to cover them. Okay. Can we have a motion to bring all that group together? Okay, Mr. Okay. Okay. We do not need committee approval for the, for the in-state like to cover we could but otherwise you have permission to go ahead with okay. that so uh, we have one out of state we're training that to our attention now <coughs> we have one out of state training which is uh, request permission for sergeant mazio patrol officer st john patrol officer carpenter patrol officer grimaldi patrol officer shrek patrol officer malley and patrol officer fish to attend the 2018 child passenger safety conference uh, march 19th to the 21st of this year in long branch new jersey uh, the majority of that is funded by uh, a grant that we get through the Governor's Traffic Safety Committee, specifically for training for child passenger safety seats. Motion to bring that to the floor by Supervisors McGowan and Wild. Any discussion? 
Supervisor Bramer. Do we have a day where people can come and have their seats checked? We have schedule? we have a couple things, and under the grant that we have, we have what's called a permanent fitting station, where we have set hours where people can come to the sheriff's office and have a child's passenger safety technician uh, examine or install seats in the cars as needed. That's over at the sheriff's office. Yes, right next door. And then there's the second thing. Uh, we uh, we do. Uh, child passenger safety events where we go around to different venues and uh, work with our child passenger safety partners doing it. Um, usually it's like car dealerships. Sean, do you advertise for your services that you provide at <coughs> the department? Uh, I know it's on the state website if somebody were to Google it. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if it's on our website or not. It's something you can certainly look at if it's not. Do it in the paper. Yeah, paper. Okay, great. And it's something that we do for free, you know, no charge for anybody that wants to come to it. There are a couple of yes. There are a couple of uh, community organizations that provide um, uh, free uh, car seats. Uh, do those are North Country Ministries being one? Uh, do those organizations get training from the sheriff's department? And uh, <coughs> they do not. Okay. They do not. I went through the child passenger safety uh, technician program probably close to 15 years ago. And at that point in time, um, at a, it's called the Institute of Police and Technology Management and the University of Northern Florida came up and put the course on at the New York State Sheriff's Association. Um, all of our child passenger safety technicians have to go through this course in order to be certified. And part of staying certified is attending the annual training for any updates. No further questions. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Item I is request a resolution to authorize co-locating a uh, location of emergency radio system equipment <coughs> and construction support facilities at the Verizon Tower, which is located on Route 149 in Queensbury. If you recall, last month we did a motion to ratify the actions of the chairman allowed us to go ahead with the leasing agreement with Verizon to a third-party vendor, KGI Wireless. This is to allow us to actually move forward with the construction phase and everything else that's required to get this up and running. Okay. Motion to bring it to the floor. Supervisor Sokol, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Discussion? Again, this is all funded through the interoperability. This, this uh, particular site is funded through DASNY, Dormitory Authority of New York State. And one of the final things we needed to get in place to get a contract with DASNY was the uh, agreement with KGI, wire, KGI on behalf of Verizon, which has been done. And now we're moving forward to getting the contract. Any other questions from the committee? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Item J is request the resolution to amend the county budget to reflect money from an insurance recovery in the amount of $1,691.60. Moved by Supervisor Bramer, seconded by Supervisor Sokol. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Item K is request resolution to amend the county budget to reflect revenues to received from the New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee grant program, uh, specifically child passenger safety, $600 for child seats, $750 for training, uh, police traffic services, uh, $16,500 for enforcement overtime, the motorcycle safety initiative, which is $6,000 for enforcement and education, covers overtime. Okay, motion to bring that to the floor. Supervisor McGowan, second by Supervisor Wild. Uh, could you explain some of the uh, police traffic services? Uh, years ago, um, the way the state of New York works, you used to have what was called Bunny Buckle Up New York. That was a specific grant. And then you had, um, I can't remember the name it was called. It was before they, they bundled all these smaller grants under one title, Police Traffic Services. Okay. 
and um, so it incorporates going out and doing traffic enforcement. It incorporates buckle up New York. They saw the buckle up New York campaign. Um, there's different times when we have to go out. Uh, it involves the uh, people passing school buses and go out and shadow, shadow the school buses and do enforcement there as well. There's different requirements and we have to make sure we meet them. And this covers the overtime portion of all of that? It does. Okay. Okay, under... Uh, oh, hold on, any other questions then from the committee? Call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Motion carries. Yes. Under topics for discussion, item A, we currently have two vacancies for correction officer due to promotions. Uh, I've one correction officer since the January committee meeting. And they're in the process of um, hiring two additional correction officers. And to update us, last year you were a little short on corrections officers. We were very correct? short. And now we seem to be pretty well staffed. One of the things that we were waiting for was to get the uh, civil service exam results back for the sergeant's position. Now that we have that, they were able to uh, make the appointments. And now because of those appointments, we have the two positions in the back for the correction officers. Great. So that should help. Sheriff? Yeah, I just want to add to, I think we've discussed briefly in the past, uh, we have two corrections officers out on 207C. Okay. They're getting, you know, we've discussed that they're getting the full pay, but they're not able to work. We've been trying for the last two years to get them retired. We've, we've tried to get the retirement system to, to take them and pay, pay them through the retirement system. Because what that does, that takes two people off. There's two people we can't fill positions for. They're getting paid through our budget can't replace them. The state has been fighting us on that. They would rather the county pay them than they pay them. Um, I've got to go to a hearing at the end of the um, March testifying. We have a lawyer out of um, Binghamton that Amy got for us who's a specialist in, in this type of work. So we're hoping that after my testimony, the judge will, will make the state say, you have to it. We're not doing anything wrong, so we can fill those two positions. Okay, so that case is for both positions. Well, for, well, there's one. We're only doing one at a time. Okay. Once, once I'm testifying in the in the first case. Once that goes, it's, the other one should follow because okay. it's the same same type of situation. They've got more than ten years, and so in, in theory they could retire, but the state is for, for whatever reason the state doesn't want to pay the money. I know you guys, man. We. You didn't do it right, or what, I don't know what they're contending. I, I guess I'll find out when I get there. But, um, the lawyer feels that, you know, after he dis discussed it with me last week, we, we told him he had questions, and we, we gave him the answers. He felt confident that we should we should do well, but he never knows. Fighting with state. Well, good luck with that. Thank yeah. you for the update on that. No, that's been <laughs> a hanging, hanging issue. That's six years we've been fighting with this. And for now, how are you feeling that? those slots during the, during the day. How, how do you schedule that? You fill it with, you know, full-time and part-time work and overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which adds its cost. Two people is, is that's a number. Hey, item B under topics for discussion. We were notified that um, somebody wanted to discuss that set point for you. So mm -hmm. we're happy to answer any questions. Sure. Sir. Yeah, that was me. I forgot about that. Um, okay, we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that would be great. And I thought I saw that there was a proposed some proposed legislation this year about that. I, 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 I think it's been knocked around. There are some people that are offended by it. That, that, uh, there are certain places that are offended that, that we do see this property, but... Uh, we have seen, seen the number of vehicles in the 10 years that I've been here. Matter of fact, the vehicle that I drive, the sheriff's vehicle, is not has not been paid for by county taxpayers. It's been paid for by a county drug dealer. We went to prison for a couple of years, but he had to fork with his truck, so he should be driving around that red truck. That was a drug dealer. So I'll let Sean explain the, the whole 
Should we send him a thank you card? Yeah, <laughs> but he, he's out of prison now. He's really welcome, so only stay the way through us. He might find his way. <laughs> 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 I don't know, Sheriff, I, I, would, I would think you should be concerned that you're seen driving a, a drug lord's truck around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't want me to paint on it. Provided to the one guy here the sheriff's office by a local drug dealer, you know, but I'm not going to do that. So over the course of uh, starting back in 2008, um, under the sheriff's York direction, um, we became m more aggressive with uh, pursuing different types of cases, uh, specifically narcotics cases. And many of the vehicles that have come to us through an asset forfeiture proceeding, and please understand, this is not us stripping somebody's property away. This is a resolution they've agreed to um, as part of the disposition of their case with the district attorney's office and with their counsel to uh, turn a vehicle or money, whatever it might be. And typically, um, when this property gets involved, it's instrumentality of the crime. In other words, it's involved with the crime that they're doing. Um, so as I said, a lot of it comes from narcotics. We also have taken vehicles from people with the warrants for garage sale who are selling uh, counterfeit goods up there. Again, they're using the vehicles to transport the goods up there. Uh, there's crimes involved when we seize those vehicles. We've also seized vehicles from people um, committing larcenies, burglaries, other crimes. But, uh, more specifically, uh, recently we had a vehicle that we uh, came into possession of about two weeks ago. It's going to become ours and it was involved with shoplifting up at the outlets just up the road. So what we do, we take a look at the vehicles. I'll send the vehicle to a garage, tell me you know, what type of condition is this vehicle in? Is it safe? What type of money? Uh, do we have to put into it? Uh, is it worth putting money into it? And if not, we usually sit on a vehicle for a couple of years and then we'll send it off to the auction. If it's something that we can use and put into service, we'll certainly do that. And basically when the vehicle becomes uh, not viable or it's not worth putting any money into, then we part ways with it. I think if Jason is here, he can probably put his consumption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the... Um, they say vehicles makes up a small portion of asset forfeiture in my experience through the time I've been here. Um, when, when you were asking, Sean was describing, the, the vehicles I can think of always came from felony level drug cases that resulted usually in a prison sentence. So an example would be someone um, was, and, and to be honest, a lot of vehicles don't get taken, so many more don't get taken. Into, but we just had a, case, a very large case where there was several thousand dollars and there was a large quantity of cocaine brought up from the city uh, that individual went to prison but they were renting their vehicle so of course that vehicle was going back. The money was they agreed as a part of their disposition to give up the money. So that particular asset was a financial asset which is usually cash is what was taken. Um, it's usually people traveling with drugs and large amounts of cash. That money then is um, separated and divided out so a big portion of it goes to, uh, I'm not sure the name of the whole acronym for it, but basically it's for treatment, for uh, drug treatment. I think that's the largest portion. A portion goes to the sheriff's office. A uh, portion goes to other agencies that participated in that in investigation. And then a portion goes to, through Rob Lynch, to the DA's office, asset forfeiture uh, fund. Uh, I recently used that, some of that money to pay for wallets so that we could cover I was actually able to this expense came up, I was concerned we were gonna have money, did a little research that we could buy law books with that money. So we took a took a portion where we were able to buy the books that we get uh, year to year. Because they get up, you know, the changes, you know, every year mm -hmm. there's some addition. Uh, vehicles, the way that it happened in the past, and I, I can't think of the last one, uh, but but just a good good example, that person was selling uh, thousands of pill uh, prescription pills, opiates. He got caught. He, through the attorney, negotiated a disposition which included the vehicle. And that vehicle went to the sheriff's and has been used by them since got five years, six, six years. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't recall if there's any financial assets in that case. But that's the traditional way. There is a um, civil proceeding that can, can take place. You'll see it more in the bigger um, DA's offices where they'll actually have a whole branch of asset forfeiture people that that's what they work on. And I say forfeiture, it's more um, a civil proceeding to try to take assets. We have 
since I've been here, I've never gone off the So it's only by the group that anything's been given Okay, so that I went to the DA's office, and I was in the asset forfeiture unit when the statute came into effect in the 1980s, and we would see boats, cars, houses, anything that you could trace the money, and it was mostly from gambling and racketeering cases, and that's where you'd get a lot of money, you could trace the assets into those locations, and therefore you were able to see. So I've done all that. So, so yes. the, the cases here, correct me not, wrong. not that, you don't do No, that. no, but the cases here are these vehicles. Right. Every vehicle that we've taken, has been, the, they, the defendant has made a deal yes. with the district attorney's office, right, Jason? Yes. We haven't seen the civilly. No. They didn't agree to it. Right. Right. So no, no, they've no, agreed no. to it. Yeah. Supervisor Watt, um, oh, Driscoll. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I understand a, a vehicle that has is a lease agreement, or there's still a note on it, or needs a lot of work. We're not going to take it. Right. We we won't if there's a lot of money owed on it. It's crazy for us. Right. But, sure. But again, back to my vehicle, uh, Jason. I I think that deal. He had to pay. He had to pay a ten thousand dollar fine. Because uh, I think there was like nineteen thousand dollars still owed on the vehicle, okay. uh, so he paid a ten thousand dollar fine, and we took nine thousand dollars from his asset to buy the rest of the vehicle. Okay, that's my recollection. So again, case it was, by case it, basis. It, I mean, that was a, a fifty thousand dollar truck. It sure, was brand oh, new. Yeah. It was brand new, so it was worth keeping. Sure. I would say the vast majority of what I'm seeing is are very low level vehicles that are uh, long paid for, they're older, sure. but they can be put into service as undercover vehicles because they're old and kind of beat up. Uh, and, they, and they do need to rotate those because if they're seen in the same vehicles, there's a danger to the undercover officers and sure one. Good. Supervisor Wild. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions. There's, is, is there pending legislation or a proposal to change the current legislation about forfeiture? Did I read something about that? There is. Uh, the governor has made a proposal that's kind of a broad sweeping change in many portions of the whole criminal justice system. So I guess the answer is yes, but that would be true. There's bail reform, there's discovery reform, there's, it's kind of every single aspect of criminal justice. Okay. Thanks, Jason. But the follow-up is: um, uh, how much money do we get from forfeiture, and where does it go? You know, I, I, does it go to your budget, sheriff, or does it, it come it, into the general fund? It goes, in, it goes into a special fund uh, that that Mike Swan keeps that can only be used for public, you know, for police services. Okay. You've got to be careful how you use it. In other words, the county can't take that money to, to spend for their budget. Okay. That's when the federal government comes in and takes it away. It has to be used for uh, police cars or computers or, or uh, even educational stuff. So if this goes away, if the legislation changes, um, okay. what kind of impact will that have? How much do you use a year out of that fund? Uh, Sean, uh, we've had as much in there. A few years ago, we had a big case. We had a we had a federal case at the end on the DEA, and uh, the, the suspect had to forfeit eight or nine million dollars. And Warren County's portion of that was supposed to half a million dollars, so that went into our fund. So that was that was big. That was, and we've been using that money over the last six, seven years to help augment the budget. You know, um, uh, you got to be careful about augment the budget because you can't augment. We supplement the budget. Mm -hmm. In other words, we'll buy things that we didn't. We need extra computer. We'll go out and buy it. So, and I don't, Sean, you know how much is left in that account? Uh, it's twenty thousand. Uh, it's it was down around the ninety thousand mark. So it's in the hundred thousand dollar mark that's, that's left. And we're constantly. We have a, a person attached to the FBI task force and DEA, and there's still there's seized money that they have in the system that we haven't gotten yet. And that's, that's a bunch more. I mean, it's been in the pipeline for a lot of years, and I'm, I think we're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars. So oh, there's, there's a lot of lot of uh, old money old out there cases. pending pending in old cases right now. But th to give you an idea, um, in the fall of last year, we purchased two vehicles uh, using the asset forfeiture money that didn't come from taxpayers. Years past, we purchased uh, patrol cars. Out of that budget, we purchased uh, investigator cars. 
you just can't budget for it. You can't do it every year because the federal government will frown upon that. Right. They'll say the county is, is you know, they're augmenting their budget by using that. You can't do that. you got to be very, very selective how you do it. We have been very selective to keep those records. We don't want the federal government to and say, hey, you're misusing that money and the county's taking advantage of that money and you can't do that. Yeah, I was just worried about the future. Whether if this oh, changes, whether you know your budget has to go up by a hundred thousand dollars or twenty thousand. No, no, because it would, it do, no, it doesn't. It just we wouldn't buy. The, you know, we put a range in, a, a brand new range up there, a firing range. We had, we had an old dilapidated trailer that was full of mice and falling down. We took that down, and, and just last year we, we took forty thousand dollars of asset forfeiture and put a nice trailer up there. So. Now it's, it's heated, it's got air conditioning, and we have a place to get out of the weather when we're up there shooting, and we shoot year round. So those are things that we wouldn't have bought had we not had the money. We wouldn't have budgeted it for because it, would, it just wouldn't have been practical. You know, we could have you know, maybe a ten up, take it down. But it, those are things that we do that are helpful to us, but that we wouldn't budget for. And we got to be careful that we don't supplement the county budget by using that money. Uh, you know, I don't know how long it's going to last, but there is, I've been here 10 years, and it's steadily had a, a, a large amount of money in there in the 10 years that I've had. Supervisor Bramer? Thank you, Chairman. One thing that piqued my interest was, that you mentioned, uh, Jason, about treatment, using that money for treatment. We had a discussion on Friday at Social Services for how helping the services about mental health and substance abuse treatment for the prisoners at the jail. That's something that I, I believe that is something that we could use, and we've used it in the past, Sean. Can you recall some of the the, um, the programs that we used before? Uh, we, we do an educational program over at Double uh, H Hall in the Woods. Right. Every year for the last like three, three, four years, we've been doing that. Um, and we use it to pay for uh, dare dare supplies. Uh, unfortunately, the dare program is pretty much going by the wayside nationally. It pays for all the training. Um, when we send our uh, tactical people out to the conference, which is one of the trainings that was listed today, that is fully funded through the asset forfeiture program. That's not coming out of taxpayer dollars. Um, the, the important thing to remember is um, it's not a guaranteed source of income. It can really fluctuate over the years. And last year was a year where we took in less than $3,000 between our state awards and federal awards. Years before that, we might take in 180,000, but it's, it's not a guaranteed income. And just to clarify, when I said there's treatment, the way the actual division of the money goes, there's, I believe it's 42 percent automatically. When, when it gets apportioned out, so it comes in and automatically then gets apportioned out. That goes to state treatment, okay. from state treatment. Mm -hmm. So a large portion of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Oasis. Yeah, it's yeah. Oasis. Yeah. Oasis. All of that is just an automated portion. So if you hear 100,000, well, 42 is going there. Going there. Are we getting any of that state money? Right. Yes, 42 percent, right? Meaning back, from back, Oasis. Yeah. Well, Oasis provides all kinds of services across the state for treatment for all kinds of treatment. So I don't know if it's direct, mm -hmm. but indirect. Mm -hmm. say. But then that is, uh, as I understand it, and I think that's mandated by either the state law or the federal law, depending on. Under state law, there's set percentages. Right. Who gets what? Right. So, in other words, Claudia, if we get up, let's say we get a hundred thousand, it goes from Jason's office. Mm -hmm. we, our office gets a hundred thousand dollars. If we get all of that, and he makes a deal with the defendant, a hundred thousand dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong. The state automatically takes forty-two percent of that. So, yeah. so we he First has all that's never happened. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but that's in theory. That's what happens. Forty-two percent goes directly to them, and then the police agency, the district attorney, give me up the, the other fifty-eight. But likewise, if the state police were to arrest someone here in Warren County and they take a hundred thousand, do we get a portion of that money? Any agency that makes an arrest in the county, so state, it could be one false police department. If there is a, a seized asset in the forfeiture, it's going to go through the same process. And there are times when multiple agencies will participate in the investigation. Yeah. We had a, yeah. a, a wire case two years back that was extremely involved. The sheriff was, I would say, the lead, but there was FBI, there was um, Homeland State Security, Police, Homeland Security, and there was, I think, the actual asset that was seized. Not unfortunately, unfortunately, we were able to get a 
about a kilogram of cocaine, a couple of guns, and about five thousand dollars. You take that five thousand, forty-two percent here, and spread it amongst those agencies you're talking about. It's really nominal. Because I, I oftentimes have to sign the checks, and you know, I'm signing checks sometimes for seven dollars. They're not. The hundred thousand is great on it. I've never seen that in my career, but in a theoretical sense, that's how it works. They are usually much smaller amounts when they come out. Yeah, I'll get checks from Jason that he'll sign for eighty dollars or fifty dollars. That'll be our percentage of the whole because they might have had you know a thousand or eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Any other? One more. One, one, one more. I'm curious. If they're arrested and they have, let's say, a, a $50,000 on them, and then you aren't able to convict them for whatever reason, they get their 50000 back, right? Or no? Yes. I mean, it's a very, in theory. We, in theory. We don't eventually. Do, we do not do an asset forfeiture without a conviction. Okay. So if they go to trial, they're convicted. There's no, there's no asset forfeiture. They're not agreed. They're not agreed. They're not agreed. They're not agreed. So then you have to go through a civil proceeding to try to get that money if you chose to do that, uh, which would be like a whole other proceeding, sort of speaking. So these are people going to the court, they say, I'm guilty of this crime, I'm agreeing to this sentence, and as part of the sentence, I'm agreeing that that money was essentially illegally gotten money that I'm not going to get back. Yeah, yeah. So we're not taking money just from, you know, if they pull me over and they're like, hey, Mr. Pearson, I see you got 500 bucks, which that also would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't go, we're going to take it, and then I say, well, I've got nothing wrong, and they say, too bad, we're going to get 42 percent here and spread it out. So no, yes. not in Warren County. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you for, mm -hmm. for that update. Yeah. We could have one more update. At the last meeting there was discussion about the centralized arraignment and the, an agreement between uh, Glens Falls Police Department and uh, the, the sheriffs. Can we have an update on how that has been resolved? Yeah, we, we met, I, I, uh, I called the state police, um, their administration, administration came over along with the chief line, one of his people. And I think we've got that worked out. What, what the chief, what the chief had problem with, if I understand it correctly, and Jack, you're here now, you can probably help with that. What he was having problems with is for him to to use the centralized arraignment. If he got somebody to stay at three o'clock in the morning, they would just watch them down there until the judge came in in the morning and just take them upstairs for arraignment. They've got a Bring, if they bring somebody up here during the, the night and then they have to come back up in the morning, depending on manpower, they may have a problem getting back up here to bring them over here and not back to their building. So they were having a problem with that. And how we how we relieve that is I told the chief, I said, well, uh, and I asked my captain, I said, how are we doing it now with our folks? In other words, if, if the state police and Lens Falls PD arrest somebody at 10 o'clock at night, and they bring them up to use our lockup. We have an MOU already in place. They can leave them in the lockup depending on certain circumstances. Where they couldn't in the past was if the person did not pass a suicide screen. Okay? They would have to go arraign them and then get a commitment and then they would come inside and we'd have, we'd have to put one of our people on suicide watch to watch them, which might we didn't do that with our folks. If, if, if the sheriff's office brought somebody up there, we'd put them right in, we'd watch them. I said, well, if we're doing it for our folks, let's do it for the state police and those folks as well. I mean, if we have to spend overtime money, we're going to have to spend it either now or seven hours from now when they're rearranged. So I said, let's just bypass all that. We can do that. So the chief felt good about that. So if they bring somebody up now, they're just going to lock them up no matter what, even if they don't pass a suicide suicide uh, screening. We'll bring them right into the facility. We can do that. In the past, I didn't think we could do that without a commitment, but we can. We can put them on suicide watch. So the chief, chief felt comfortable with that. And that was, well, was an oral agreement that I said, we'll start immediately. We started that that day. So that is out there for the state police and the, and the uh, Glens Falls PD right now. I don't think there's been a lot that's happened as far as that. Nobody's not passing 
uh, suicide screening, but it's in effect. So in theory, it's not in our MOU that we have presently, but it orally it's in, 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 um, in action now. So we're, they're doing that. And if we ever get the centralized arraignment, we can just amend the MOU to add that to it. The one that's being crafted right now includes it? One that's already crafted that I, I give to the county attorney, it's already in there, yes. Good. She has it. She has it ready ready to go. But it's moot at this point because there's no centralized arrangement at this point. Right. But this is in place, so now we can move forward. Orally, yeah. They, I mean, Good. if the chief or the state police have somebody now, they can just Good. leave them there. Thanks for working that out. Yeah. Thanks for working out that, that last little bit. Marcy, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I had sent everyone a memorandum um, of the meetings that we had with Indigent Legal Services, Supervisor Leggett, Supervisor Bramer, and the County Attorney were all present at that. And when they, when I specifically asked the question, is there funds through ILS, through 722E, for the Sheriff's Department, the DA, anything else? And the answer was no. The answer was that there's only funding for Indigent Defense, which would be the Public Defender's Office. Okay. Thank you. So I sent you out, as soon as I got that information, I sent that out to everyone. So that blows the whole deal right out the window. It because we've got, a budget, we've got a budget prepared that mm -hmm. extra security in there. They're going to say, no, you guys pay for it. Right. Um, the judges are paid for to a separate, um, through OCA. Okay. The judges would be paid for. They're paid right. the state. Yeah. Right. So that's separate. But anything else except indigent defense, PD's funding, has to be done for the county at this point. Supervisor Bramer. What, was um, OCA going to pay for the additional security for the judges? Was that? I no. I remember if they, no, they said no. no. Okay. They so were. Really that was in the budget. Blow up the whole thing. That yeah. was in the yeah. budget, yes. Yeah. Right. Um, we were led to believe, uh, it is my impression from um, Matt Shivers from OCA, that he believed under the legislation 722E that all these other expenses could be could be paid for by it. I know Judge Hobbs is still checking in to see if anything else could happen, but I thought it was important to let you know as soon as I knew something, what happened. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Okay. Next is the Warren County Office of Emergency Services. Ryan? is a resolution to uh, approve the revisions that were made to the Warren County Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. This is a document that we update regularly and uh, we do need to approve those uh, revisions that have been made. Okay, a motion to bring it to the floor. Uh, Supervisor Driscoll and Supervisor Wild. Okay, good question, uh, Supervisor Bramer. Can you give us like a um, summary of what the changes are? The condensed version? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will let the author of that document do that for you. As a condensed version, we updated some names in it, uh, the table of contents, we go into the plans, we updated some of them, there were some typos, there were some dates that we changed, there were some formatting issues that we changed. In Appendix B, we added some language uh, about the volunteers, uh, staffing, and the racing activation. Appendix B is the EOC. Appendix B, we 
we updated uh, the stats in there. That's just like Warren County stats. We get it from a website. We just took a copy and paste it on there. And in the past, in the base plan, uh, we used to have, I think it was three pages, which um, kind of talk about the, the multi-year training and exercise plan. But it wasn't detailed enough, so we took those three pages out, and that's now in Appendix S, and it's, it's a lot more comprehensive. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Next. Item two is a resolution request to uh, form a contract with Water Horse Adventures, LLC. We, for years, have used Morin's Dive uh, Center for our uh, training and for equipment repairs for our marine rescue team. And they have gone out of business or they've been sold. And the new company in town that is going to be doing that work and is actually being uh, manned by the people that used to work for Morin's, other than Rich Morin, is Water Horse Adventures. We have gotten uh, pricing from them, so we have to have a contract with them. Um, the, we usually go for $5,000. This also includes our rescue team as well as the sheriff's dive team. We both use that particular vendor. Okay, motion bring it to the floor. Supervisor Sokol, second by Supervisor McGowan. Discussion? Hearing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next. Item three is similar other than this is for training as compared to equipment repair. Okay, motion bring it to the floor. Supervisor Wild, Supervisor Hogan. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Item four is a resolution request for out-of-state travel for Deputy Director Hirsch, uh, Amy, to attend the uh, Foundation Emergency Management course, which is going to be given in, in Emmitsburg, Maryland. This is a course that uh, is part of the uh, scenario that is necessary for us to um, obtain FEMA grants and we have to have people that are certified in that particular scenario, so um, this is training that she will be taking to accomplish that. Okay. Moved by Supervisor Bramer, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, we don't have any pending items. Uh, we do have uh, two travel requests that we did. Uh, one was for Amy and I to attend the NICEMA conference in Syracuse. The other was for myself to attend training at the State Preparedness Training Center in Oriskany. Those, that's just for your advisement and you'll see copies of that in your paperwork. Okay. Anything in particular you learned there? Well, the bottom line is um, drones are, we have determined, are very important and are very useful. Uh, I'm starting the process to get licensed to operate one. Um, at this point in time, I don't know that we, we have several people, uh, local citizens that we can utilize, but as far as I know, we have no one on county staff that is licensed to operate one. Uh, fortunately, uh, not that we're going to necessarily get one, but the state finally, after five years, has acknowledged the fact we can use grant money to purchase one. So that's a good thing. We're also working with our partners in Washington County. Um, they currently, uh, the <coughs> deputy director over in Washington County has one, his personal unit. Um, but he and uh, Washington and Warren are going to work together to share pilots, to share equipment. So we're not, you know, not everybody has to go out and spend a ton of money on buying one of these. We have found over the last month um, the use of the drone in Thurman for the ice jam unbelievably uh, useful, great for situational awareness to know what's there, to see what you can't see, um, and to do it safely. So um, it's become very obvious, both from fires, hazardous materials incidents. We just did a hazardous hazard materials drill with our consortium. If you can send in a device to go into the cloud and see what it is and carry a monitor in with them and bring it back and tell you what it is, without putting any of your people in harm's way. Um, it's, it's become uh, very, 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 very useful. So 
that's just something we're going to be working on down the path. But in order to do that, we obviously have to have some licensed people. Thank that you, answer Dr. your question. Floor. That did. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Appreciate it. Next is public defender. Good morning. I have a few things for you. The first is to ratify an existing contract with Lexus, with Lexus Nexus, and to negotiate a new contract. Our previous contract was never signed. Um, it went to an existence before I became the public defender. We previously used Westlaw as our search engine, as our research engine, and then we switched to Lexus Nexus because it was cheaper. I know the county attorney was kind enough to determine we did, they didn't have a signed contract, they didn't have a signed resolution for this. We're still paying it, um, and I sent, provided a copy of our bill so you can see. So I'm looking to ratify an existing contract and then permission to have it negotiate a future contract. And um, the county attorney has referred me to Julie Butler to have those negotiations done. Okay, moved by Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor Bramer. So, and Supervisor Bramer. Thank, thank you for bringing this to us well in advance of the expiration thank you. of our contract that we don't even have signed, but still. <laughs> hey, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Supervisor Wild. Wow. I'm curious, are, are, are different teams within the county using the same service and are we leveraging this and when we do our contract? And that's why Julie Butler is going to be negotiating it. I think we were the first to go to Nexus Lexus, um, but I believe um, the county attorney uses it, the DA uses it, the sheriff's department uses it. So it, the only search engine, to my knowledge, is Lexus Nexus because it's cheaper than Westfall that's being used by the county. Okay. So this action is to ratify a contract that we have been using, have been taken advantage of over all this time. You have we, been using. We have it has never been signed. No, but no, but the service. We've been it. using the service. Okay. all this time okay. and we've been paying for it and that's why I attached a copy of the bill because they changed the billing to put it directly as an email as opposed to sending it through the U.S. mail. So okay. that's why I attached the bill so you can see that we are paying it. Right. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. The second item is a resolution to ratify a grant application that we had um, Chairman uh, signed. The reason being the grant application had to be in by a certain date. It was submitted. This is grant application number eight. We have distributions and grants and this one's number eight and this one is to extend number five. So I'm next going to talk about number five but this logistically this was the next thing that we submitted. So okay. I'm requesting. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor Bramer. All those in favor? Oh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. The next item is dealing with Distribution 5, my biggest frustration so far. Distribution 5 ran from January 1, 2015 to December 31, 2017. We finally got a contract for this grant um, in November and Chairman signed it, which we greatly appreciate it. We sent it to the state to be signed and by the time we got it back, it has expired. So I have therefore requested of the um, Indigent Legal Services an extension of the contract. The Chairman has signed it, which I appreciate. We've sent it in. So this is to ratify the extension of a prior contract that was expired that we would like to use someday. All right. Motion to bring to the floor Supervisor McGowan, second by Supervisor Bramer. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. I just want to make sure you understand, I don't spend any grant money until it actually exists from the state. We have the spreadsheet and everything signed. Okay. And oh. so I'm keeping up with that. And the work plan you included, that was for the grant? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the last item is the matter that was held over, was tabled from last time, which is the arraignment part, um, because Glen Falls um, wanted to discuss it further with the Sheriff's Department. So that was tabled, and that's why I put it back on the calendar for any discussion that you wanted to have. It sounds like we are good to go, that the parties uh, that had, had questions about it, uh, that has been resolved, there was cooperative agreement. Uh, I have a question. Yes. What advantage to the county is it to do this? If it's going to cost us money now. 
Well, my position would be eventually it will be cost saving to the county because the sheriff's not driving all over and all the other agencies in the DA's office and my office is not driving all over. And I believe that what we're trying to put through through this resolution was to get it so that we could get it to OCA. Obviously, it's not going to go into effect until there's funding because obviously that becomes an issue that we all have concerns about. But if we don't present it to the um, state, we're never going to get it forward. Um, I believe based on my meeting with Indigent Legal Services that um, Supervisor Leggett, um, Supervisor Raymer, and the county attorney were present. Um, obviously funding becomes an important issue. Um, they believe that eventually as part of the three areas that the um, state is and the governor is focusing on for the next five years for indigent defense is important. the importance of having an attorney at arraignment, which is one of the basis of the um, litigation. So they may force it in some way, shape, or form, and it would be better for us to come up with a plan that would be best for us, if at all possible. So I believe the reason we were going through with this procedure and this resolution is to at least so we could get it to the state as part of our plan. And then obviously if the funding isn't there, we don't have to go through with it. It's not a requirement. At this point? At this time. Yes. I have a question. Supervisor uh, Diamond. When you send in your application for the grant, would it make sense to also include at that time the memorandum of understanding that's going to be drafted and adopted by the City of Orange Falls along with the Chairman signing it through Warren County so we have that agreement in place uh, along with a resolution of support from the Orange Falls County Council. Wouldn't that be necessary to be part of the package that you're going to send in for approval for funding at a later date? And the, the funding from the Indigent Legal Services, uh, which is where I get my grant funding, will not approve anything other than the PD's office, which is why I put okay. that into the email to everybody. Um, in terms of the memorandums of understanding and the resolutions um, from the Common Council and from the county, that goes with Judge Hobbs, to, and he submits it to OCA. It's the plan for the county that he submits. I do not personally submit it. Okay. On that issue, I'd just like to report that I did speak with the mayor about that and they're still working out the details of the memorandum of understanding and once that is completed then the council will adopt the resolution of support and it'll be forwarded back up to the county the county chooses to uh, undertake that initiative and that's on the agenda for this month for the common council i understand i haven't seen the agenda but i have to um, agree or believe that that could be the case yes there's a meeting tonight okay you going to be there, Ben? Cool. That'll be there and report back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So that means next month, perhaps we'll see that on the agenda for our action. Good. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you very much. Next up is the district attorney. to be brief I know I got added on we, there's something that's been going on annually through our office in the Washington County DA, DA's office uh, in working together uh, prior to that I think our office was doing it individually Washington was doing it on their own but for the last 10 years there's been a crime victims award ceremony that takes place in April oh, sorry. the uh, this this year it's April 8th through the 14th um, and they're calling it expand the circle reach all victims the purpose of that week is to basically draw attention to victims rights and the support systems that we have within our community and all communities across the straight state and the nation in support of crime victims um, you know I can go into great detail about crime victims if you want me to but I think we all know they range from the elderly to children and everything in between in all different forms including families who've lost loved ones, uh, which would be the most severe 
to obviously sex abuse victims and d domestic violence victims and many of these people are find themselves in very challenging situations before a crime has ever occurred. Uh, they can be living in difficult households, domestic violence. It's a very rare thing that the first episode of domestic violence is reported at that time. A lot of crime goes unreported. This breakfast is uh, something that one of the things that was developed under Kate Hogan is what's called the Courage Award. And the Courage Award is given to a crime victim that's been through an especially difficult and trying year. It's usually within the preceding year, depending on where the case stands. Uh, we've had some that have had to be postponed because there was still pending litigation on, on the matter. Um, I was told before I asked to bring this up here that I didn't have to seek approvals, but I wanted to do it. And so if you say, well, you don't need to do it that way, I still want to make sure everyone was aware of this program. Um, in the past, uh, it was budgeted a little differently, and my focus, as I told you, I think, early on was to hopefully keep costs to a minimum um, in a general sense, because that's just my personality. The request that we put in here is to transfer $500 out of our supplies into uh, the food line to offset these costs. The, the way the costs work is they're borne by Washington County DA's office, Warren County DA's office, and several other local uh, providers, um, domestic violence, uh, the care center, uh, Wellsprings, and I think last year and the years past, it's a, I'm going to give an average of about 200 people attend uh, each each one. This year, it will be in Washington County. Next year, if, it, if you want us to continue to co-host these, it will be in Warren County. Um, this isn't just a Warren County event. We're talking about a Warren Washington County event, but it really starts that week um, in Saratoga County DA's office has an event to kick off the week and it carries on throughout the whole week throughout the areas of the state. Um, so when we brought this before you, you'll see attached in our paperwork a figure of approximately $900. Uh, it's in the blue handwritten notes. That's not the transfer, but that's the expense because I already had some money in there. Since we made the submission, I scheduled a meeting with um, members of OVS and the DA, Tony Jordan, and I said, what can we do to lower this cost to all of us? And this morning I got an update which brings, it's informal, but brings it down about 45% to around $500 is what our portion would be to be the co-host and participate in this year's event, uh, which is obviously down from what was proposed and down from what, from my knowledge, what's been years past. We're going to try to streamline things, be a little more efficient, but still cover the 200 people. Right. Th thank you. Do we need, does this need to come before for action on this, this transfer? It's, if you're going to transfer, yes. Okay. Motion by Supervisor Wild, second by Supervisor Bramer. Any discussion? No. I want to say th thank you, Jason, for bringing us before the, the board. This does look like a very worthy event. We will hope to, to attend. And I, I have Mano Affinito here, who is the uh, coordinator for the OVS for the county. Yes. And my understanding is normally a lot of the supervisors are uh, participating in this event. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that. And for, for the new supervisors, OVS stands for? Office of Victim Services. That's uh, the grant funding that s supports our victim services for the county and has for as long as I can recall. Um, what
the one thing, Supervisor, I wanted to add. Those numbers that I'm giving you, there's going to be invitations. So if our numbers are down, then of course our expense will be down. If they're up a little bit, it'll be, you know, I, I can't. Wedding every every year. Wow. What's the time again? This is going to be April 9th in, yeah. uh, that morning. In this particular one is going to be in Washington County. Okay. They're expecting, and we'll be getting those invites out. We're expecting, they're concerned. Their space that they've been using was um, by Kingswood Golf Course. There was, I don't know what you call it, a, sort of like a city area. Washington County, so we always had it at the Queensbury Hotel. We always had it there. And we held growing space, which is nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. did you have some? Yeah, I've just I've been to a handful of them over the years, and, and if you want to be inspired, uh, certainly sign up. Uh, uh, men and women who are recognized, uh, everyone, uh, whether they're recognized or not, uh, have inspiring stories to show. And, and I think one of the, the goal, is, and I'm sorry, I know you're busy, but the goal is to maybe reach a victim who hasn't reported or tie groups together that maybe don't realize they don't even know about each other and say, oh, you do this too, let's meet. And so I think there's a ton of benefits for what to me is a very low cost. Uh, and uh, last year's victim testified in her trial where she was um, subdued in her home and attacked by a stranger and sexually assaulted. And she said that it was very meaningful for her to get to thank all the people that came and helped her because there was obviously a police response. And she wanted that chance and it's so it was very meaningful to her. So I think... <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. No other business before, before the committee. Motion to adjourn. Andrew Hogan and uh, Michael Weil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.